Coming live from Houston with Vanessa Verdugo and Dubai with Dave Crane, you are watching The Toilet Paper Diaries. Great to see you, uh, Dave. We are right now on the big 2-0. We have managed to do 20 episodes. This is our 20 episodes. Uh, oh, so congratulations. Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, it means that uh, we're going to go to 21. That means that we have been three consecutive weeks doing the show. That's very exciting, I think. That's amazing. And we've been doing it every single day, not missing a beat, doing it for... Uh, we started off trying to make it about 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it's got all the way up to about an hour many nights as well. Um, and that's just because when you start getting into doing this, you realize how much actual news and how much content you want to share with people. Uh, and then when you get all the inputs from the reporters all around the world, you have to make a decision, who are we going to cut? We don't want to cut anybody. So it's nope. just a real challenge of that. But it's uh, that's showbiz and that's life. Today's episode is going to be everything about authenticity. And I think uh, uh, it's going to be incredibly interesting because uh, we have some amazing insights. So make sure uh, to watch the entire uh, episode. So Dave, uh, let's just get started with the news. So we had some uh, breaking news uh, just moments ago. We heard that uh, Bernie Sanders actually just got off the uh, the presidential race. Uh, well, obviously, once again, we are saying that we're not going to uh, talk into politics, but this is just something that just happened. And uh, it just happened some minutes ago, so possibly you're just listening to the news right now here. Yeah. That's <laughs> news to me as well. It's, good, it's interesting because politics has taken a... Well, not just politics. Everything's taken a back step um, to the coronavirus. And so uh, I think anybody who's trying to get attention or anyone's trying to campaign, forget it. People want to know if they're alive. That's the main thing. So, uh, yeah. yeah, interesting to see how that plays out. And this other one is something that I was expecting. However, it was not really announced until now. But uh, that is something that uh, I think is also going to have uh, an interesting uh, impact in uh, Dubai, where you're actually living right now. The UAE officially asked to postpone the Expo 2020. Yeah, Expo 2020 was a huge deal. About five years ago, Dubai won it. it. It goes out every five years. I think Milan had it about five years before that. And what it does is it means that you've got six months of, of basically uh, driving Dubai um, as the number one tourist destination around the world, which in many ways we are. Um, and with that, the government spent a fortune on building huge domes with lots of activities going on and bringing in some incredible world-changing acts. In fact, we had uh, Mariah Carey, doing a free concert um, near the big fountain at Dubai Mall um, to announce the opening of the, the, the build-up towards Expo 2020, which is all very exciting as well. Um, but, of course, building up, up towards a crescendo, it was meant to be happening in October, November time, um, and, of course, we can't do anything about it. So the suppliers are on hold, everybody's on hold, and the world is basically on hold. So it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me it's that different from a decision that was made with the Olympics to just give it another year so you can do the build-up effectively and properly. For Dubai, I think in many ways it's the right thing to do um, because there's no choice for everybody but to do justice to it. Um, and uh, it's very smart of the, the decision-makers from Expo and also from Dubai uh, um, government uh, to, to make that happen. It, it, there's no other way of doing it. Otherwise, it would have been a rush job. But to be honest with you, having been out here for 25, 26 years, when they rush something, you wouldn't know. They just build it and you just go, oh, where, where did that come from? Well, we built it. So yeah. they could have done it, but it makes sense for everybody to be able to plan it properly. And uh, also on some uh, uh, sad news, I just uh, heard uh, of, this, uh, of this news right now. And uh, that, of course, I'm sure that it's going to be saddening um, a little bit the uh, the Dubai community that uh, Richard Corum Definitely. is another victim of the coronavirus. Yeah, I, I knew Richard Corum quite well. He was a radio presenter, TV presenter, um, when I first arrived in Dubai. Very well-known, household name. And then he and his beautiful wife, uh, Padma, who was an MTV um, presenter, um, created the Talent Brokers. 
who were um, the first um, events organizers to bring in really big names because with MTV backing them, they could take everybody across the Middle East and India as well. So the likes of Brian Adams and UB40 and men, many other big names all came to the region thanks to Richard uh, and his wife. And a uh, lovely couple, really nice guy, really smart, really intelligent. And in many ways, a, a, a bit of a mentor for me, not, not because he was telling me how to do it, but literally because he laid down the foundations that you could come to a place like Dubai, be in media, and then evolve and grow and stay in Dubai. Now, he lived in lots of different places. Unfortunately, he passed away recently uh, in the UK. But he built up an empire. He was loved by everybody, very well respected, one of the pioneers of the expats to do things in Dubai. And I got numerous calls from my friends from my old radio days and my old event business um, just saying how sad they were to see the passing of Richard Corum. And he will be missed, a real legend in Dubai. Yeah, very sad. Well, I'll, uh, our hearts go to the uh, families. And, uh, yeah, I think it's just something really sad that uh, this horrendous virus is uh, affecting already some amazing people, it's taking away some amazing people. Uh, in another news, I also would like to uh, share with you that uh, after the uh, toilet paper mess that we experienced in the past few weeks right now the bidet industry is uh actually booming a lot of people are actually installing bidets in their house and uh just this is an interesting uh interesting uh, um, uh news which are happening right now let me just qualify the toilet paper mess it has two connotations what we're talking about was the craziness in supermarkets not what happens after you've used toilet paper, but two different things. And the idea of bringing B-Days in, I don't know who's going to fit them. I mean, if you're good enough, you can reach a sink. Until then, you have to wait for the workmen to come around. Um, but yeah, B-Days are a very smart move. In Dubai, in the UAE, in this part of the world, they've got um, they've got sprays. I don't want to talk about that anymore, but it's just true. Okay. Hey, possibly we should rebrand and we should call it the B-Day Diaries. <laughs> B-Day Daily. B-Day Daily, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, also, by the way, happy Passover to all our uh, Jewish friends today. Uh, it's the beginning of Passover. And uh, this uh, this is a picture that I just saw that, I, in a way, I think it's very sweet. Uh, we can see here a grandfather with a picture of his entire family. He's just uh, a a social distancing on his own, having Passover dinner uh, with pictures of all his entire family. So that's just a, a very sweet uh, think. That, that was the same as most of my birthday parties when I was growing up. All the kids that wouldn't come round, I just got pictures of them. And just like that, they were never facing me. My parents didn't want to disappoint me. They had them facing the camera. And nothing. I don't want to talk about this. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, good. Well, um, I uh, just share with me this picture, and uh, I think it is just perfect to what we uh, are talking about, what we're going to be talking about, authenticity. And right now, I feel exactly the same way. Every time that I watch the news, I really feel myself like jumping into one of these plastic bags and completely cover myself. I mean, the, the amount of negative news that we are getting right now, that, that we're bombarding every single day, is just absolutely horrendous. <laughs> Tell you what we're going to do. Maybe tomorrow, uh, a guy called Chris Cuomo, who's a CNN um, presenter, um, has contracted the uh, coronavirus. And he's still broadcasting live every day. Now, I downloaded a video, which we'll share tomorrow, all about the decision that he's made, having talked to doctors. Um, and he's aware that he's got his lungs are being filled with this stuff. He's aware he's got a crazy temperature. But one of the best ways he's decided to fight it is to, as much as possible, do what he would do normally. Not lie down, let it take over, and hopefully it will give him back his body afterwards. Just keep fighting it. Breathing, working. Uh, doing all the, if anything feels painful for him, he's going to do it until he gets better at doing it, until eventually he wins the battle. And it's really brave to see somebody putting up such a strong fight in public. And so he's got his, his x-rays, he's got his blood tests, he's got his advice from the, from the doctors, and he's going to publish it all later on. So people who are fighting it remotely can then see from him another way of dealing with it without having to go. He'll only go to hospital if he has to go. He's going to self heal at, at home. And he's still interviewing people. He's interviewing Joe Biden and various other people today. He's a real trooper. And you may know his brother, Andrew Cuomo, who's the governor of, of New York. But it's a different side to the coronavirus rather than people saying, I'm a victim, goodbye. 
uh, which is a terrible thing to have to deal with. Um, but to see somebody who's fighting in public, and I wish them all the very best for a strong recovery. On the our very last news, our very last news before we uh, trans uh, we do our transition to the content of this program. Uh, I was reading this article recently, and I think it's just uh, really interesting. Uh, we are living in uh, very uh, strange times, very interesting times, and I believe I do not know for how long this is going to last. However, I believe that the next generation is going to definitely be shaped or affected. I mean, the, this generation, Generation C, is going to be tremendously affected by uh, what is going on uh, right now. I mean, I think right now uh, it's so absolutely critical that we help kids understand what's going on because suddenly they were they went from going to school and having just a, like a normal life to be completely quarantined, to be separated from the world, uh, to do a lot of things which I think are, uh, you know, are very strange for a kid. So uh, today we're going to also be sharing with you some really nice exercises on what you should be doing uh, with your kid. We are living in absolutely extraordinary times. And, uh, you know, a few years from now, uh, I think it will be very interesting to use all this information to let new generations understand how we are all feeling. There's a thing called second generation Holocaust syndrome. And this is what affects the grandkids of people who survived from the Holocaust or who lost their, their parents in the Holocaust. So the grandkids, what they end up doing is they, they grow up with an unbearable feeling that they have to make sure that their own kids go into the establishment. So they have to become lawyers, they have to become doctors, they have to become uh, scientists. They have to be embedded in a way that they can never have everything stripped away like they did during the Nazi Holocaust in Germany during the Second World War. And it's a real thing because my, my, uh, great par gran my grandparents came from Germany during that time which is a story which my original name isn't actually Crane, it's Crone. Um, and I think that you're going to have another impact of that type with the kids growing up for right now. It might not be something that affects them directly, but it will be something that subconsciously has an effect. And I think we also have to address the challenges for everybody in lockdown. Your relationship with people will either go one of, one, one, one of two ways. You'll either embrace people and love people more, or you'll be very suspicious of people and be used to working on your own, and that'll stick for some time. Plus, also, those who've lost parents or lost loved ones or friends during this time and felt they weren't able to have closure, that's something that's going to haunt for a very long time. So there's a lot to be answered for and a lot of work that people previously might not have entertained mental health as being so important. It's going to be really important. Mental health and empathy are going to be buzz terms that we should all pay attention to from now on. Perfect. So, yes, indeed. Uh, so keep on watching the show till the end because we're going to be giving you uh, some great advice on how to uh, deal with this. But right now, I think it's uh, uh, absolutely critical before we go into the sadness part, which is exactly what we are trying to fight every single time. We want to bring some light humor into what's going on right now. People are still doing some uh, absolutely crazy stuff at, uh, at their homes. And uh, just let me just show you what is uh, one of the latest uh, trends for some people that have a treadmill at home. Just have a look. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Oh I realize now how much time I've been wasting just eating these normally. So many options. This is brilliant. That's my next game. You know, one of the challenges I had was uh, I had a, um, an exercise bike, which I was using. And I stopped using it for about six, six to 12 months. And now I look like I stopped using it 20 years ago. Um, but I got rid of it. I just got rid of it because I bought a bike. And now I can't get out on a bike at all. And I wish I'd kept that exercise bike because at least I could do something with it during the lockdown. So that's a, unfortunately just the way that the cookie crumbles. Yeah, you know, I, I find it amazing how fast uh, big companies react to these kind of things. Yesterday, people were asking uh, on on, um, uh, on Facebook, who would you like to be quarantined with? And to this morning when I wake up, I see that they suddenly Facebook has an app or, a, 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 you know, like a little tricky thing 
telling you, well, who wants to actually quarantine with you? So we have here some uh, really uh, interesting examples. Our good friend, Michael Dietrich, actually figured out that he wanted to be, that uh, Jason Momoa wants to be quarantined with him. I think that's just uh, really super interesting. Uh, well, you, I, I, um, uh, I got yours, which I think is also really uh, interesting. You are going to... Uh, Daener Daener Daenerys, the, the Queen of Dragons from Game of Thrones who starts off being a hottie and then goes completely bonkers after that and kills a whole city full of people. Yeah, that's my kind of chick. So it's perfect. Yeah, great. <laughs> well, and then I I, uh, I said, well, you know, this is uh, telepathy because I uh, I just learned that uh, Charlize Theron wants to quarantine with me. So I think yeah. we are both, we're both in sync. <laughs> well, the thing is, she looks a lot like your wife anyway. Jo jo uh, Joan, who's gorgeous. So um, I think I think you're already locked in with Charlize Theron, as far as everyone's concerned. Anyway. Yeah, that is true. That's true. I have a very a very beautiful wife, and I feel very blessed uh, about that. That's cool. So got you, out, got you out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's a good thing about doing this in uh, as a team. Hey, uh, talking about um, a team, we have our team of reporters, which are already waiting for us uh, to do some reporting. So. We are getting uh, right now, uh, Australia is now ready. So uh, can you tell them, Dave, who? Um, yeah, this is my dear company. friend, Roy Kowalski. He's a sales and marketing influencer and expert. And uh, we're, we're connected on LinkedIn. We chat a lot. And uh, it's nice to see you. I hope you're staying safe out there, Roy. Hi, Dave and Anista. Just wanted to check in all the way from Sydney, Australia. Um, as you can see, it's dark at the moment. Um, it's quarter past five, half past five in the morning. Um, just been down for a walk on Bondi Beach Promenade. The beach itself is closed, but um, we're allowed to walk on the promenade. We're obviously a little bit of social distancing. And just to let you know that um, this time of the day, good to have a bit of exercise. And what with this whole uh, COVID-19, it's really important that we carry on with our exercising and try and remain as healthy as possible. So wishing you all a very, very happy, healthy, safe day. And with that, back to the studio. I think it's uh, amazing the time difference between us and Australia. I mean, for him, it's five o'clock in the morning. For me, it's 12.20 in the afternoon. Uh, by the way, let's just take a chance to uh, say hello to people which are watching us right now live, like Jan Roberts, all the way from South Africa. Hey, Jan, how are you? We're seeing uh, Tracy oh, yeah. Zimmerman. Uh, Tracy, we always enjoy that you are watching our show uh, daily. I really uh, enjoy that. So thank you very much. And uh, we see also Pete Garcia, which very soon we're going to be also having another show uh, with him for the uh, Houston community. So hi, uh, Pete. Thank you very much for your congratulations on our 20th. It's not an anniversary. It's a 20th days on the show. But anyway, thank you very much for your uh, messages. All the way from Kansas City, uh, we have our uh, next uh, beautiful correspondent, an amazing lady, Trina Rice. Hey, Ernesto and Dave, it's Trina Rice here, reporting from Kansas City. You know, amongst all the chaos in this heartland of America, you know what? The blooms are, the trees are still blooming. The sun is shining. The geese are even out. The flowers are emerging from the earth. And that's kind of what I want to share with you today. I have so many people who've come to me who are overly sensitive, empathically aware of all the fear and the angst and the anxiety that's going on. And we go into the wrongness of a given situation and into what's wrong about this and what's wrong about us. But instead of going into the fear, what if we could actually go beyond that by asking, hey, what's right about this I'm not getting? What's right about me that I don't even know? Because I'm telling you, in the situations like this, what we think sometimes is the greatest wrongness, out of that can come the greatest strongness. So I dare you to start asking, what's right about this? What's right about me that I'm not getting? And be grateful. Find those few things that you're grateful for. 
You can find more about me, Trina Rice, and my business partner, Kim, at energeticsignatureformula.com. And there's some tools there to help you get past all that angst and anxiety. And also the Misfit Squad um, on Facebook and Instagram. So amongst all of this, embrace your differences. Find your strongnesses. Back to you guys at the studio. You are so amazing. Thank you so much, Ernesto and Dave. That's awesome. And uh, let's go back to Dubai because we have uh, another of our great friends, Phil Bedford, uh, which is in the other side from where you are there in Dubai. Dubai is a very large city. And uh, uh, he's very close to the Raffles Hotel and very close to the uh, Moven Peak Hotel. I've been to his house uh, a few times and it's always a pleasure uh, to share some time with him. So, Phil, are you there? Hey, good morning, world. It's Phil Bedford here, reporting on behalf of Dave and Ernesto from Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. And, you know, you can see the streets are pretty quiet behind me, same as everywhere. There's just the odd person out there. You know, one of the most amazing experiences I think I've, I've noticed in the last week or two is while we're being told to social distance, people are reaching out to connect in ways that they never have and often more than they ever have. There's tons of stuff going out on, the, on, uh, on YouTube and Instagram and all these platforms that are making people laugh and connect. So here we go, guys. We've got two choices here. We can allow ourselves to spiral into a pit of despair, or we can find ways that we can get out there, connect, and try and come out the end of this with something more positive than we went in. And if that positive is reconnecting with our friends and family who are miles away, then so be it. You know what? I say to you guys, Dave and Esso, thanks for doing this. This is connecting people all over the world. And I'll tell you what, guys, if you've got one action from today, find someone you haven't connected with and find some way to go and connect with them today. Dave, Ernesto, the world, stay safe. Phil Bedford, see you soon. Brilliant. Thanks, Phil. I'll tell you what, I saw more traffic in the backdrop there than I've, I've seen in a long time because we're on, we're on full lockdown as well. So tomorrow I've had to apply to Dubai police to get a permit to go to the shops so I can go and buy some more crisps and bits and pieces. And uh, you apply on your phone, you've got an app, and uh, you'd say where you're going, how long you're going for, what your car registration is, and uh, they allow you to go. Now, the thing is, it sounds kind of sinister, but it's not. The reason I love it is because they're really clamping down. You don't leave a house unless you need to leave a house. And if you do leave a house without it, you get a big fine of about 2,000 dirhams plus plus, which in the, in the U.S. dollars would be, what, about um, $500, $600? something like that. So they're really serious about making sure that the, the quarantine works. And I want it to. I don't want to spend the rest of my life in this house as much as I love being in with my family. I want some daylight. And so, um, yeah, I mean, the more they clamp down it, the better for everybody, I think. And Phil yeah. Bedford, by the way, is the best networking expert I've ever seen in my life. He knows how to make friends with everybody anywhere around the world. So thanks, Phil, for joining us on that. Yeah, I am uh, incredibly grateful to see all the people which are uh, you know, uh, contacting us to be part of the show, and uh, we would like you to we would like you to also contribute to the show. Make sure that you uh, join us in our uh, LinkedIn group, which is the uh, you can go to bitly uh, bit.ly never alone tribe. Uh, let us know who you are. We will we will love to feature you over here in the show. Right now, we have featured over uh, thirty different uh, speakers, experts. Uh, incredible uh, people from uh, television to, to guest stars. And uh, this just shows how impactful uh, this information can be. It's time to fast forward to authenticity. And uh, I think right now it's the time to think about how we want to be, how we want to position ourselves, how we want to be perceived by the other people. So I think right now it's a time of ethics, respect, honesty, and integrity. Let me share with you very quickly what happened to me yesterday. And I was uh, actually talking with Dave about it. Uh, yesterday, I was uh, uh, browsing in my uh, LinkedIn page, and I suddenly saw somebody which I actually know personally. And uh, he was just showing one video of him and everything it was about me, 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 me. Look at how incredible I am. Look at how fantastic I am. I have the best thing. I am the solution. 
And I, I, I just really felt incredibly uncomfortable with that video because possibly that video might have uh, resonated, which it, it wouldn't have resonated with a person like me, but it, it would have possibly resonated with some people right now. And I literally tell you, it made me want to puke because right now I don't want to see how incredible you are, but I want to know that you are at the same, you're suffering the same uh, feelings and you're ha you're going through the same experience as I am uh, going. And this is one of the reasons why we decided to actually call this episode uh, authenticity. Right, Dave? Yeah, I think the key to and this is just a sales thing. What people want to know is what's in it for me. You might be great. That's fantastic. Or you might not be great. That's also fantastic. What's in it for me if I connect with you and do business with you? What do I get? And so if you're singing your own song, blowing your own trumpet, saying how important you are, nobody cares. I don't nobody. expect anybody to care about me and what I do. It might be interesting, and sometimes it's very funny, but their only interest in me is, okay, Dave, you've done all these things. What do I get out of it? I don't want to do a celebration of you. I want to see how we, what you can do can help me, my business, and so on. If the answer is nothing, we're done. Goodbye. And that's the way you have to look at it. And I like it. It's clean, it's genuine, and it means that you've got to reinvent yourself and get over yourself at the same time. And uh, what you need to remember, and this is one of those things that I just get shocked every time that I get to see any of those people which are, you know, trying to sell you in the way that uh, they were doing previously. It just makes me really sick. You have to understand the following. Authenticity influences the decision to support a brand for the millennials in 90%, 85% for Generation X, and 80% of the boomers. People will buy and will work with you if they like you. And right now, this is a perfect time to send that message to show exactly who you are and not only to try to brag about how incredible you are because absolutely nobody cares and to be more precise about it and that was a great explanation Ernesto when it comes to buying businesses it's not just about the profitability of a business it's about how authentic people perceive your brand do you really care do you care about the environment about the climate about people who are having a hard time do you give money towards those causes those things are worth a lot because they might not mean that you make a huge profit but it does mean that you're in the hearts and minds of all your customers who who will pay more for your services because they know what actually goes with it is something that they resonate with. So being authentic, growing your brand and understanding who your target markets are is very important. I'm going to be talking about that in the next uh, next few moments uh, as part of Fast Forward. You shared with me a very nice video about the, twin, uh, the 10 qualities of uh, authentic people. So uh, let me just uh, show this video because you're gonna really enjoy it. I think one of the things that this is, I mean, that was about leadership. It's from Entrepreneur Magazine. I think one of the things that you're going to find about leadership now is a lot more companies going to be born out of having distance uh, remote staff and virtual staff in different countries. It's more cost effective. You don't need offices. And as more products go digital, you won't need to have staff doing the same thing. So that means a whole new type of leader. 
And that leader cannot be a micromanager. That leader cannot be somebody who shouts at people because having a bad day. That leader has really got to understand how each of their staff feels in their relationship to the company, to the brand, to their job, to their stuff at home as well. And you've got to have empathy at the heart of everything, which you never needed to have before. And also, if you've got somebody who's on a distance working with your company, yeah, you might be sending them a wage and you might be paying them, but they don't need you. They can get that from anywhere by building up a brand online and connecting with lots of different potential paymasters. And it's very likely that they'll have six or seven big payers that they're working on a small contract with on a regular basis. So it's really down to leadership and companies and brands to start thinking about making it employee centric rather than we're the brand and therefore you'll be lucky to work with us. I don't think people are going to care about that quite so much when they become a brand themselves. Yeah, you know, we are right now um, uh, planning on doing a, one episode on the wild, wild west. What's going to happen uh, after the coronavirus uh, pandemic finishes? I think there's going to be a very huge restart. And uh, one of those things is authenticity and leadership are going to be incredibly, uh, incredibly important. One of those things that I, uh, I wanted to show you about uh, leadership, and I was actually very excited. It was very endearing. Uh, for me, my uh, son Vincent was yesterday recording one of those videos. Remember in one of the very first episodes that we started showing how they were doing those uh, videos, like if they will be in Zoom and everybody was recording their little, uh, their little the orchestra, and then, uh, they were just added together. Well, yesterday, um, let me just show you it's about uh, 30 seconds here. My son Vincent was actually recording his piece uh, yesterday because uh, the music teacher is for from his uh, orchestra is going to start uh, doing that. Have a look. <laughs> Very cool. So I'm very happy that, uh, you know, what we are doing is uh, also uh, influencing others because, you know, in the same way that we are trying to show the way with stuff that we are seeing, we're also seeing what's going on with um, uh, with schools. And uh, I, uh, I yesterday, Vincent uh, got an assignment that really got me thinking. And I really absolutely love it. I thought it was just a uh, uh, absolutely brilliant. And uh, let me just show you another another um, uh, video of Vincent. He's going to be introducing what uh, Dave and I would like to recommend you guys to do uh, in a moment. So let's just uh, bring Vincent once again. Uh, so Vincent. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dave. I just got an assignment from my language arts teacher on online school, which is basically writing a letter to yourself that you will get four years from now. And... I can only do it with the help of my assistant, <laughs> Boris. Uh, my dad will further explain. Uh, thank you, back to the studio. That's, uh, that's very, very nice. So basically the assignment that the teacher gave them was to uh, write a letter to themselves, or in this case, you can write in a Word document or in, a, in, like in an email kind of thing. We'll tell you how you can get it done. You write down a, a letter to yourself explaining what's going on right now, but try to be as accurate as possible. Uh, what has happened? What are your observations? What's going on? Uh, as detailed as you can possibly be. And uh, then uh, you can uh, use this tool, which is a free tool. It's called timecave.com. Uh, you can go to timecave.com. And you can program it to send it to you to your email address in a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, whenever you want, it will actually be sending it uh, back to you. I think that's just a lovely uh, assignment. Uh, don't you think, Dave? I do. And I think it's one of those things that we talked about on the show where kids don't really know. <laughs> Are you okay there? My mic is not <laughs> Oh, goodness me. You're okay now, though. Kids are always, we're always talking as parents about how to keep your kids um, able to deal with what's going on right now. And uh, getting them to write a letter to themselves in the future is a beautiful way of being able to put it in perspective. Because uh, just like a letter to Santa, we've got to dig in deep and realize who they truly are. And also um, write down their feelings and their understanding. It's all emotional intelligence stuff. 
So writing that letter to themselves is something that I'm going to start doing with Maya um, tomorrow uh, when she's at school, at home school. Uh, and I think it's a really genuine way of getting kids to be, to be able to put what's happening right now into perspective. This is another recommendation that we got from our friend uh, Tony Waitley that um, uh, he's, uh, we will have him very soon on the show too. Uh, he was saying that right now, while what we are doing, uh, while we are in quarantine, it will be a great idea to interview every single member of our uh, family. I mean, if, if you're with your mom, if you're with your dad, uh, just prepare some questions and uh, ask them. Uh, I didn't do that when uh, when just uh, when my dad was uh, alive, but uh, there was someone else because he just got a re an award just before he died and. Uh, uh, that interview I cherished, uh, cherish it very much. So I think right now it's a great time and a great idea to interview your parents, record those uh, recordings, even record your kids and uh, save those recordings. I've done that. When I went home a couple of years ago for Christmas, I sat with my parents and I interviewed them. And I interviewed them especially because I wanted to ask some questions, but also because Maya, who's nine, by the time she was about seven, you don't really know your grandparents that well anyway. You know them, you love them, you've got the names for them, but really they're just cuddly, older, grumpy, well, with less grumpy versions of your parents. And so to have that as a record, um, and it was only about an hour and a half chat with them, uh, and I promise not to be on social media, which I won't do, but it's something that we could keep somewhere safe for Maya when she wants to know and ask questions about granny and granddad uh, in later years. So I would urge it for everybody, interview everybody in your family. You have time and you also have access to a phone. If you can put it on a tripod, even better, a tripod. Um, if not, I mean, if you're on your own, you can also interview yourself. Ask yourself lots of questions that maybe you wouldn't share with other people. So you can then do some stuff that's introspective. You've got an opportunity with all this time to do the most you can. And personal development is excellent, but also recording the members of your family is, is something you just never, ever get the time to do otherwise. That is correct. Okay, everyone. Well, uh, if you like the content of the show, uh, let me remind you that you can listen to it on a, a podcast version. You can go to bit.ly, bit.ly, toilet paper podcasts. And uh, I think uh, you, you're going to find it very, uh, very rewarding. Make sure to uh, watch us uh, the show tomorrow exactly at the same time, which is 12 o'clock uh, Central Daylight Time. And what time is it in Dubai? Right now it's 9.42. We started at 9 o'clock, so it's well past my bedtime. So until yeah. this time tomorrow, stay safe, look after yourself, and make sure you connect with all the people that you love. Let them know that you care because it matters. We'll